Uh, it's been really smooth. It's been uh, it's been picking up, getting better. Uh, we worked through all the uh, all the difficulties from the first couple games of the season. It's been more, much more efficient. So, James had mentioned in the first home game there were some difficulties. What were some of the things that were difficult to do, and how do you go about cleaning those up? Uh, really, I would really just say just hearing. I'm, I'm sorry, just hearing like the message and hearing the call. Sometimes it might be too loud, or I might not be able to hear it from the mic. So. That's what it just just hearing the call. That's really it. And yeah, who's in your ear now? Yeah, Connor. Okay, so th was that a change after Tom went up, or was he doing it the whole time? It was a change after he did it. Saying at the same time. Okay. And what's it like having a guy who's played at that level and obviously has been out there at the NFL level, being able to communicate with you? Uh, it's amazing, actually. Just having him like giving me certain tips and like you know uh, the call and setting the front, obviously, but. You take stuff from the meeting rooms to the field, and you know it feels kind of the same every day. Kobe, um, I want to take you back to 2021. I know you were a red shirt, but that was the last time Illinois came here. Obviously, the nine overtime game. Is there anything you remember from that? And are there any lessons that you guys have learned from that that you take into Saturday? I remember that it didn't go the way we wanted it to. Um, I remember how much they ran the ball on us, and we didn't come out with the victory. So, uh, if anything, I would just say this week is going to be the total opposite of that. That's all I got to say. What have you seen from their offense on film after breaking down what they did against Nebraska? Um, I've seen they're, they're a great team, physical team. They like to run the ball. They like to target other main guys in the air. But, um, you know, we just got to stop them at what they do best, really. But they like to run the ball. They like to bring it up front and uh, challenge guys. They're big guys. They're our big guys. So that's what they want to see, and we're going to make it happen. And their quarterback, I mean, he went into Nebraska over 200 yards, four touchdowns. What have you specifically seen from him, Phil? Oh, he's a good. He's a great quarterback and player. Uh, he got better from last year, from what we've seen. Uh, he seems more confident, but he he can run, he can pass, and uh, he he's a guy that kind of runs their team. So we gotta get at him and you know make him a little uncomfortable. And with a team like that that's coming off an overtime victory in an environment like Nebraska, which many people have compared to Penn State, pose any sort of threat to you guys coming in with their confidence the way it is? Oh, not really. We approach every week the same week, the same way too. Um, yeah, it's not really much on our head. We we just get ready for the noise and you know same type of game plan. What do you think of what you saw from Specka in the game the other day? Oh man, I, he didn't really he didn't surprise me at all. We kind of knew what kind of player he was. He's a smart guy. He picked up things fast and uh, he he was just playing like high school football out there when he got out there. So it it, didn't, it wasn't a surprise to me. Was he basically in your role? Uh, he actually one of the guys playing all three linebackers. So. Okay, but would he have been calling the plays out there? Was he communicating, or don't you know that? No, he wouldn't have been. Okay. And uh, James said he's probably going to play this week as well. Or he's going to be green lit. I mean, how important was that performance to get ready for a Big Ten game? Well, it was something that really just you know trying to lead him into the next week and him uh, becoming much more confident from being out there on the field and actually playing. Uh, you know, just getting ready for college football, especially Big Ten football, as we on this Big Ten streak now and. He's ready. You had mentioned you joked a little bit in the preseason that sometimes uh, Tom's voice got a little raspy, hard mm -hmm. to hear in the helmet. So was that a change at all with having Dan in there? Uh, I mean, it was definitely a change since it was made. Um, you know, voice is kind of a one thing, but you know, it was just it was just the whole the whole setup. But um, it's efficient now, so yeah. What are some of the lessons that you've been able to take from Dan, not just from a headset perspective, but just on the field technical kind of standpoint? Uh, really just how to understand the game, how to read the offense, how to break down, like what they're trying to do. Um, and how to disguise some of our looks and, you know, just just uh, develop better personnel in the, within the scheme and learn how to play within the scheme. So, you know, I'm just getting with him to make my game much more faster, uh, efficient, and much more fluid out there. So, yeah. A lot of great players don't necessarily make great coaches. What What is making him a, a good coach out there? I would just say his experience. Um, he knows what he's talking about as well, and just what uh, his production and what he's done in his past, and you know everything that we can learn from that. So, and guys admire him. So he's been a part of LBU and still a part of LBU. So guys look up to him. Guys admire him. Guys love to get coached by him. And you know he's a great person to talk to. So. It looks well, like, you won't want to let him down. That's yeah. it. It looks like Coach Allen gives him a lot of responsibility, too, whether it's on the sideline or out of practice. We see him taking you guys through all mm -hmm. those drills. What does that say about Coach Allen having that sort of faith in a young coach? Well, that says he has a lot of faith in him. And just because uh, 
type of person Dan Connor is, what he show up, how he shows up every day, and uh, his approach to the game, to the linebackers and the defense. And um, yeah, he got a, a big chip on his shoulder, but he's taking advantage of it, and uh, you know he's he's leading the way. In the way. I'm sorry. What was the, the first half going back to Bowling Green before you guys made the switch? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you guys worked a ton with the helmet communication all preseason, offseason. Was there a moment of panic where you're like, I cannot hear? Or like, what was that before like you guys kind of figured this thing out that you had to tweak what you're doing? Oh, we knew it wasn't like always going to be efficient, so we had like a signal if we didn't get the call or we couldn't hear it, like a tap the face mask. But it wasn't ever really a panic because, uh, you know, we're kind of used to like waiting on the call or, you know, the coach is kind of figuring out their formation before we get the call. So the worst came to worst, we either changed the call or waited till the call came out, but it was never really a panic because our defense is used to it. Do you feel like it's tough for you? Because a lot of guys have said that trying to get to the corners uh -huh. and like they're so far away that some teams have had, you know, the corners where the headset is stand. I would say it's like, it's not, I would say it's tough for me when I'm tired and I still got to communicate to everybody or when Everybody's being urgent on getting the call, so they're waiting on me. But I'm the one waiting, so that's probably that's <laughs> probably that's probably it. They waiting on me, but I'm waiting on the call to give them. So that's probably the most big toughest part. And it's tough too, cause it's like, hey, I gotta set the front, and I'm waiting on you. Yeah, like it's, yeah. Like, it's not my fault. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, so that's probably the toughest thing. Um, what do you think you learned about how the communication at Bowling Green and how maybe changed the kind of state? I just learned that it was like a, you know, a sense of urgency thing. Even with the car coming in late, coming in early, you still got to get the call, uh, lay the call, every, make sure everybody get the call. And, you know, just, it, it just gave me a sense of urgency to make sure everybody's on the same page and everybody's on, you know, the same way. Man. So, yeah. is, it, is it more difficult or easier to hear when, when Coach Allen is up in the box? He's not the one giving the call, but Dan Connor is. I would say it's, it's, it's definitely easier from this transition that they made. With him being in the box? Yes, sir. How so? Uh, just him not being on the mic and Dan Connor having the mic and it being a different voice that, you know, um, it's kind of more understandable. I'm not saying that Coach Allen's voice was, wasn't understandable, but, you know, he's a younger guy. He gets us more, so not as that's probably it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Kobe, what has Dakari done uh, since he's switched to that linebacker spot? How quickly he's, he's done a lot line? for our room, for the defense, for himself as minutes, well. Guys, uh, for the room, he's bringing our game up by just bringing in safety uh, tips and like things that he learned from safety for the defense. Man, guys loving him and they loving his transition for himself. He's just he's approaching it every day the right way. He's become a linebacker. He's playing differently. He's he got a little bit bigger, but. Um, He's definitely he's definitely going to make a great impact for us the rest of the season because the transition was good for him. Thanks. Kobe, how would you evaluate the depth of this linebacker room and how explosive they can be against Illinois? Oh, we, we, we're stacked. Uh, we're ready. Guys, Guys, I would say from my um, time being here this year and the group of guys we got this year are probably more urgent, more uh, attentive, and just more on task with learning, wanting to get better and, you know, uh, making new mistakes. But, you know, we're all ready to play. And anyone can go in and execute the way we need them to. And um, we got guys that can do it every position. Mike, middle linebacker, outside, you know, strong side. And, yeah. What's well, kind of the ceiling for Tamir? Oh, man, I want to really say it's a ceiling for him. He, got, he has a lot to get better and to, to grow in different areas. But, man, he's a guy that improved since last year. He showed up, uh, made plays, and, you know, it's just about getting better every day for him. Because, you know, season gets longer and, you know, you got to kind of step up the, the pedals through every game and every week and get better. So that's where he is. Kobe, from your perspective, like with Tom in the box, how has that changed things outside of like helmet communication? Well, it hasn't really changed because I'm worrying about if the play is over, getting the, getting the call, laying it to the guys. When I play over, getting the next call, unless we say the the call. But uh, nothing's really changed. My same approach and uh, urgency is the same with the mic. Uh, with, him or him not giving me the call. So. Yeah, you, know, you, guys are, you guys were able to pick off the Illinois quarterback four times. What, what's the key to stop you again? Uh, the key is um, kind of similar to what we did last year, uh, harass him, uh, get him uh, off his first look. Um, and we just we just want to make him, we want to make him quit. Or we just want to make him throw the ball away quick because we're coming for him, so yeah. Thanks, Kobe. Thanks, Thanks Kobe.